Hello and welcome to Big Jim Gaming, where we have new videos every Friday, plus bonus content during the week as well. And today I'm going to talk to you about CEX. Now, whether you be a casual gamer or a collector, you will have dealt with CEX if you've ever bought games in the UK. I've been a customer at my local shop since it opened virtually. CEX is without doubt my favourite shop to go into no matter where I am. If there's a store nearby, I'm going in there. And I've learned quite a bit about them through the years of being a customer. And these things I'm going to share with you, hopefully, to improve your experience using them. Now, I know the shop has its lovers and its haters. And there's a good argument for quite a few things there. All I would say to you is, the first thing to know about them, they are a business. They are there to make money. They are not going to give you the same price for your games that they're going to sell them for. Because then, they will go bankrupt. So do accept when you're dealing with them that they are a business. They're doing what they do to exist and to make money. The people who own CEX, the shareholders, whomever gets all the profits from them, that's why they're doing it. They're doing it to pay their bills, and the staff that work there are doing it to pay their bills as well. Please, when you go in, whether you agree or disagree with something that happens in the shop, with the price they offer you, with the price they're charging for something, the people in there are good people doing a job to pay their bills, just like you and me. Be nice to them, no matter where you are in life, no matter whom you're dealing with. You'll always get a better experience if you treat them with respect. That's what you want, so why shouldn't you give it back in return? Now, one thing that I have noticed about them is that prices do tend to vary with them. Sometimes they can be the cheapest place to buy something. For example, one of my favourite DS games of all time, Cop the Recruit, compared to what you can buy it for on eBay, they're actually the cheapest solution. In other circumstances, particularly with consoles, I find, they are a bit more expensive, such as the PlayStation 3, for example, which you're seeing on your screen now. You can see you can actually buy it on eBay generally a bit cheaper than you can in CEX. Obviously, with consoles and things that are heavy to post, you can get them even cheaper if you find them locally and you can collect them. But when you buy from CEX a piece of hardware, whether it be a console, whether it be a controller, you might be buying something completely ungaming related, maybe a mobile phone or a computer. You do get a warranty with them. And that is one of the reasons they charge more. So they can give you a warranty. I recently purchased my Nintendo Switch Lite from CEX. In fact, I've actually got a whole buying guide, which you could be interested in after you've watched this video. I bought it from them knowing that at £120, and this was the cheapest they charged for a Switch Lite, I was paying 20 to £30 more than I could get it for on eBay or something like Facebook Market. But I wanted the two-year warranty because that's not a small amount of money to me and it made me feel better. So there are pros and cons to buying your hardware from them. The fact they're a little bit more expensive, just bear in mind there are advantages and disadvantages. Decide if it's right for you. One of the two main things they've come under fire for quite recently is sale of the new or the current generation of consoles. For example, the PlayStation 5. This is what they're selling it for currently on their website. This is what it's going for at RRP. You see the difference there. I don't like that practice, if I'm honest, but I understand it. Truthfully, if I struck lucky and I managed to buy a dozen PlayStation 5s right when the demand was at the highest and nobody could get them, I'd sell them for as much as I could because I want the money. They're a business, as I've already mentioned. Just because they're making money out of a situation, in this case, supply and demand, which is the oldest equation in sales, supply and demand. Don't hate them for it. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to buy it from them. Nobody is holding a gun to your head saying, go to CEX and pay this price. Just choose not to buy it from them if you don't agree with it. Now, most of us, when we go to CEX, we deal with them with games. That's what I deal with them most of. If I'm buying bundles or if I manage to drop on something that's worth a few quid and I get it really cheap and I want to make some money from it, then I will take the game into CEX and trade it in. Something to be aware of when you're trading in your games. First of all, they'll only take them in the case. If you've got loose games like I do with my handhelds, 
just for example, some of my DS games, they're no good to see yet because they won't touch them. They will occasionally take loose cartridges from the more mature systems, the more retro systems, for example, the Sega Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo, and of course, the original Nintendo Entertainment System as well. But in general, it's got to be in the case, and it's got to have the UK standard age rating on it. So if you happen to have an American copy, for example, that doesn't have the age rating on it, the PEGI rating, P-E-G-I, they won't take it from you because they cannot sell an item that's age restricted without the up-to-date age rating that is UK standard. Please be aware of that. If you are buying things specifically to flip at CEX, whilst the value of something from a different region, as long as it's on a console that's not region locked, like the DS, for example, is negligible, they won't take it. So if you are buying for CEX, make sure it's got that age rating. One thing you do that doesn't matter with them, they don't care about manuals. In fact, one thing that I wish they would change, I wish they'd state on their website if the item comes with a manual or not. Because as a collector, I like a manual, especially on the older stuff like the PlayStation 1 games. It's just part of the item being complete to me. So if you have got something without a manual, if you were selling it privately on eBay, that would actually affect the price. Not to CEX. If you've got doubles, one's got a manual that you want to keep, one hasn't, you'll get the same price from in CEX. Keep the one that's best for your collection, pass the other one along. Also, if you can buy something without a manual at a cheaper price because of that, you can then trade it into CEX for the same price that they give you a complete item, make it a little bit more profit. Another thing with their games, they don't tend to put the price up for special editions. Now, I say don't tend to because occasionally they'll check. So if your local CEX does charge an extra pound or two for an item that's a special edition, please don't go into the comments saying, you lying fat so-and-so. And I'm fat, but you don't have to call me a liar. But rarely. And I have had instances where I've bought a limited edition, a steel book, for example, from them, sold it on eBay, and actually turned a profit that way. Also, if I'm just collecting for myself and I like the limited editions, which I personally do, I don't pay any more for it. Now, we have been talking about buying and trading games with CEX. The first thing, if you are using CEX to trade something in, Unless you really need the cash instantly, always take the voucher price. The voucher price is always more than the cash alternative. Sometimes by a large margin, sometimes by a lesser. It tends to depend on the value of the item. Always take the voucher option. The voucher option makes CEX the better place to trade your games in over cash converters, game, and all the other shops. Don't take the cash alternative because I would say 90% of the time you will get a better price if you want the cash by selling it on something like eBay. You just will. The vouchers are there to be more appealing. It's simple business. If they take something off you and give you a voucher which you can only spend in store, you're going to come back and buy something else, usually by adding some cash on top of the voucher price as well. So it's a really good business practice for them and for you, it's absolutely brilliant because it means you'll get a much better figure for your item. And if you are planning on building a collection or maybe you've just bought a game that's quite recently out, like the latest Horizon, you've played it, you've completed it, you're not planning on playing it again anytime soon, trade it in, get another game with it. If you really want it in your collection in a year or two's time, buy it then, it'll be a lot cheaper because games prices do generally fall like stones, apart from the Switch. So that is another way you can get the latest game, you can play and enjoy it, you can trade it in, and get another recent title. I cannot recommend the voucher system highly enough, and I cannot steer you away from the cash alternative highly enough, unless you are in a situation, which I have been in myself, where I needed the cash instantly. But one good thing about their cash system, you walk in with your item, you show them your CEX card, you agree to the price, they may have to test it if it's a console or something, and you walk out with your cash. So it is a way of getting cash quickly if you need it. And like I say, we've all the been The next there. thing I would like to pass on to you about CEX is when you buy online. 
If you're a fan of YouTube and you watch a few gaming channels which mention CEX, you might have heard the term CEX Roulette. Now that doesn't mean that you buy a mystery item. What it means is when you buy something online, you don't exactly know the condition. So they'll state online whether it's a discounted price, but you're always taking a little bit of a gamble. Now I've already mentioned about the manuals. They never state if they're in there or not. So that's your first bit of roulette. The second is the conditions of the case. I've recently bought two PlayStation 1 games from them. Nothing particularly spectacular, but both games that I've got fond memories of from my youth that I want to replay. Now the first one I bought was this. Mission Impossible for the PlayStation 1. And it's actually pretty mint. It came with the manual inside as well. I won't show you the disc because it doesn't show up very well on camera, but trust me, it's in good nick. And I was really pleased with that. In the same order, although it came in a different package, so it must have come from a different place, I also ordered Men in Black Crashdown for the PlayStation 1. Yeah. See the cracks? I can actually push it in there. It's not even attached at the bottom. Same on the back as well. Now, I will say inside, I did get the manual that I wanted. So that was nice. And the disc's in pretty good shape too. So it's not one that I'm going to complain about and I'm going to keep it. But I didn't know what condition the case was in. I didn't know if it was going to be as good as this one or worse. Bear that in mind. Now, the next thing I actually only learned quite recently when I bought my Switch from them. Back again. I didn't realise that each store interprets condition slightly differently. So I went to two CEX shops to buy my Switch. The first one I went to, the cheapest one they had in the shop, was £140. Not a bad price. It was a grey one. But the screen was rather marked and scratched. It wasn't unplayable. You couldn't really see it unless you really looked for it when it was turned on. But I wasn't happy with it. It wasn't something that I would choose. So I left it and walked away. I then went to my second CEX store, my more regular one, and that's where I bought this from. Now, this was only £120 and down as discounted. Yet, there isn't a mark on it apart from the joysticks were discoloured. One quick wipe with an antibacterial cloth got rid of that. The screen's perfect. Everything else about it's perfect. And I said to the guy in the shop about my experience with the other one, I said, why is it that that was a little bit different? He said, well, first of all, the yellow and the pink switches tend to go a little bit cheaper than the greys and the blues anyway, which is interesting to know. Also, he said, we do interpret things a bit differently. So the first shop I went to was actually a franchise. Now, I didn't know this, but CEX is actually a really big franchise company. There's only a certain amount of them, which are what you call network, where they are part of the main big company and they work for and managing director and things like that. A huge amount of CEX stores are franchises owned by an individual. So of course they can interpret condition to their own standards. Also, even in the network branches, they do have guidelines to follow. Of course they do, but it's how strictly you follow them. So in my local shop, he said, we follow them very, very strictly. If there's the slightest mark on something, we mark it down as discounted because we find personally that when we sell things on the internet, things just get returned to us. So we'd rather mark something as discounted and it'd be better than they expect than the other way around, which I think is a brilliant business practice and is why it's going to maintain its place as my favourite CEX store, because I really liked that. So just be aware, if you have got access to more than one shop, maybe go between them, especially if you're buying something which is hardware that has a scratchable screen. I mean, a game at the end of the day, it works or it doesn't. But the cases are different. They might consider a case in really good condition where you wouldn't go between the two. You never know. Now, I'm only going to touch on this because it is the other of the two main things that I've seen CEX criticised for. Reprinted cases. Now, this isn't something I've actually come across. And I have been through my game collection just before making this video because I was hoping to find a reprinted one to show you, but I can't find one. And I don't just buy new games from them. I buy from the PlayStation. Well, I buy anything, really. My oldest collection is the Game Boy Color 
and the PlayStation 1 right up until the PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch. Still don't have a 5 yet. But we're talking about this. The slip that goes on the outside of the case. Now, apparently, and it's been well documented, so I've got no reason to disbelieve it. Where they've been receiving games from wherever they get them from, where it's been like this with no outer sleeve, Whereas if you or I took this into the shop, they'd simply say, no, thank you. They've been reprinting them and putting it on it to resell it. Now, I feel the controversy has been because they haven't clearly stated whether it's a reprinted label or not. And I 100% fully get people's frustration with that. Because if I'm buying something as original and it's not, it should be very clearly stated for everybody to see so it can't be missed. I've not experienced it myself, so I'm not going to give them a slating for it. But if it is some, well, I know it's something that has been practiced. And I get the impression they've stopped now. I did some Googling about it, but I'm not going to put screenshots up because it wasn't reliable sources. Where they said they've changed the policy, and if they do it, they're going to put it in big, bold letters on the case. But yeah, do keep an eye out for that, especially if it's important to you. Now, I mentioned earlier about being nice to the staff there because they're just doing a job. And you always get further in life with any human being if you treat them the same way you'd want to be treated yourself. If you do that well enough, and you're a regular shopper there, like I am, I tend to be in there about once every week or so, sometimes twice a week if I'm in town that often, you will build up a rapport with people just by being polite, saying hello. And if you do talk to them about what it is you're looking for, they'll let you know when they see you. Now, I'm not saying they're going to reserve things because that would be an unfair expectation and could get them in trouble with their boss. And I'm not saying they're going to use their staff discounts for you because they won't. I've asked many times. But by building up that rapport, when you walk in, if they happen to have a PlayStation 1 game that you've mentioned you're looking for, and because you've been nice and polite to them, they want to help you, they'll go, hey, this is just coming. Let you know. Or it's just in the cabinet. Don't miss it. Always build your relationships up. In fact, treat that as a life lesson, whether it be work or personal. Connections are king. Why shouldn't it be the same in your shops? Now, as I said, I am a big fan of CEX. It's my favourite shop, and I really think they're good for the game industry. Now, there has been criticism, particularly with regards to the retro games, that they're responsible for an increase in prices. Now, there does seem to be a bit of a retro game boom at the moment. I'm noticing prices going up on things. I'm sure you have too, if you're into retro games. If you're not, it's probably quite a boring video, so thanks for sticking with it. Subscribe! Yes, so they have been said to be responsible for driving prices up. Well, as I mentioned earlier, the supply and demand equation. You can't blame them for trying to make the most money. If you've got an item right now that you're selling yourself, do you want to take less for it, just to be nice? Or do you want the most you can get for it? I'll wager you want the most money, because I know I would. What I would say is, whilst prices have definitely increased, and it has increased at CEX as well, whether they're responsible or not, without CEX, I and thousands of other gamers would not have access to the games that we have. Think about it. If CEX didn't exist, you'd only get your second-hand games from places that also sold new ones, like Game. In fact, that's the main one, really, isn't it? And their prices... It would probably stay up and they would have a smaller selection. If it wasn't for CEX, I know for a fact that my game collection would not be as big as it is. I know for a fact I would not have access to the titles that I do. And I also know for a fact that just by browsing along the shelves, I wouldn't know the existence of the games that I own and enjoy playing. I really do believe that they are the most important store to the retro gaming community right now because they're the main one that caters to us. We need these people, we need these shops. Otherwise, you're relying on people like me selling off parts of their collection when they fancy it, or when they need to, on things like eBay or Amazon, maybe. What do you think is going to happen to prices then? I don't want to sell this, but I need to. Nobody else is selling one. I'm not going to sell it cheap, am I? Think about it. At least they're given a structure. You know when you're out game hunting, if you're looking to buy something to flip, you can go onto the CEX app, you can check the price of that item, and you know exactly 
the rough retail. And of course, it can give you a guide for other platforms to sell on as well. And they're just a few things that I've learned about my favorite shop, CEX. I never intended this to be a video bashing them, just stating a few facts. And also, as I said, trying to enhance your experience with the shop as well. Make sure you get the most out of it. Have I missed anything off? What have your experiences with CEX been like? Pop a note in the comments after you press that subscribe button. Please. I'll see you soon. I have a new video coming out next Friday, as we do every Friday, of course. But there is going to be bonus content before then as well. So watch this space. Plenty more to come.